What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. So, yeah, Taika Waititi has been making the rounds lately because of some comments that he had when it comes to adapting comic books to live action. And one of the things that I've always said is, is that if you're going to adapt something, you got to do it right. All right. Because you have especially something that's a big property because you have a whole lot of fans that are out there that are probably looking forward to you adapting something from one medium, which is, you know, comic books or maybe even a novel into live action. OK, everybody has their own ideas of how it should be done. I think that it's very important for these filmmakers to go out there and just do it right, you know. But what you have is you have all of these studios, all of these guys gobbling up all of these legacy properties with these giant fan bases. You know, legacy properties, they didn't create. They didn't put one ounce of creativity into it. You know, I'm talking about like Disney buying Star Wars and Marvel, you know, Warner Brothers with DC. They didn't have anything to do with the creation of these characters. These characters have existed for decades. And they want to turn them into movies. But the issue that I have with it, I don't have a problem with you adapting it. But then you want to go ahead and just run amok and just do whatever it is that you want to do. It's kind of like with Ryan Johnson. That was the biggest problem with him. You guys remember these quotes that he was talking about last year? You know, when he was saying, oh, yeah, I'm still doing my Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, and I'm sure you are. But it's quotes like this, quotes like this that let you know this is the problem with this cat. Uh, it would break my heart if I were finished, if I couldn't get back in that sandbox at some point. See, he sees this whole thing as just some giant sandbox, you know. He wants to go out there, he wants to play on the playground, but he doesn't want to play by the playground rules, you know. It's like you can almost see this cat like working out and playing out his own head cannon in the backyard with his action figures. It's like that's what this guy is doing. And that's what Taika Waititi is doing. Yeah, like he said here, if you want it to be exactly like the comic, read the comics. Like, he doesn't want to stick to the script. Yeah, we want it like the comic. Maybe not exactly like the comic, but like the comic, okay? Can it be closer to like the comic than not like the comic? How about that, you know? If we have to lean in one direction, why don't we lean towards, oh, well, it's more like the comic than it isn't. But see, that's not what this guy wants to do. He wants to get out there, like I said, play in his own playground with his own sandbox and his own rules. You ever had that when you was a kid and you were playing and it was always one guy? Like all your friends, everybody's kind of on the same page. We're all playing this game, whether you're playing Star Wars or you're playing, you know, G.I. Joe or you're playing Transformers. Like you all playing like kind of the same thing on the playground. Everybody's on the same page. And then there's one wild card that just comes out of the blue and just tries to wreck the whole game. You know, and it's like, I hey, mean, get this dude out of here. We were having a great time playing Star Wars with each other. And then this knucklehead comes in and he want to do something stupid. You know, like, come on, get this guy. Out. That's basically what Ryan Johnson and Taika Waititi and these guys are. And look, don't get it twisted. I actually think Taika Waititi is a good filmmaker when it comes to his stuff. You know, what we do in the shadows, Jojo Rabbits. I'm like, I love those films. Those are good films, right? It kind of brings up another principle that I have, which is everything ain't for everybody. You know, everything ain't for everybody. You can't do what everybody else is doing. You know, some filmmakers just can't make certain types of films. Not every director can direct every type of film. Not every writer can write every type of genre. It takes certain people like that's your wheelhouse. You know, you look at Wes Craven like, yeah, Wes Craven. Yeah, you that horror director, you know. Now step outside of horror, man, we don't know. But horror, that's you. You know, and it's the same thing like with Taika Waititi, like he does these kind of offbeat comedies, you know, and that stuff works fine when he's doing his own stuff, but it doesn't work for everything that's out there, especially when you start to switch genres and you're coming into a character like Thor, you know, or heavens forbid, he's talking about doing Star Wars. I don't think he fits for Star Wars at all, you know. I didn't mind Ragnarok. I thought that was like a one-off. Like, okay, it's a little offbeat. He's taking the piss out of Thor. All right, cool. You know, go ahead, do this. But yeah, Thor Love and Thunder was dog shit. Like absolute wretched dog shit. Yeah, but let's go ahead and jump into the article and see what it has to say. Uh, uh, apparently still unable to accept that his attempts to subvert audience expectations with the Golden Avengers fourth 
solo film completely missed the mark. Uh, director Taika Waititi has attempted to deflect the near universal criticisms Thor Love and Thunder's quality by painting those unhappy with his work as comic purists whose only complaints are that the film is not exactly like the comic. The man who hollowed out the God of Thunder's cinematic incarnation pushed back against its critics while speaking in reflection of the film's production for Thor Love and Thunder, the official movie special book. For a transcript of the relevance section provided by comicbookmovie.com, uh, Waititi began by admitting that he found it very difficult to nail down the film's tone as he was torn between his incessant need to add his tired brand of humor to everything and the gravity of Jane Foster's cancer-based storyline. Yeah, see, like this didn't mix at all, okay? Uh, his humor, this cancer storyline, it was like, what the hell is going on here, all right? That's again, he didn't write this story, but he's going to try to adapt the story, but he wants to throw his own little humor in there, you know? And so, yeah, you got to stick to the script at some point in time, or at least match the tone. And he was struggling with that. Again, everything ain't for everybody, Taika. Maybe this wasn't the movie for you. Maybe you shouldn't have adapted, you know, the uh, Jane Foster Thor storyline. Maybe that wasn't the storyline for you, you know? Find a different storyline where it plays more into that. It's an ongoing battle because I want my films to be entertaining, said the director. You hear that? All right. As if the storyline wasn't going to be entertaining without you, all right? Without your little brand of humor. And I want a lot of humor in them to poke fun, not only at the idea of the space Viking, but also to poke fun at humans, how we bumble our way through life on this planet. Yeah, again, see, that's what's entertainment to him. That's what, say, hey, this is entertaining to me. I want my films to be entertaining, so therefore, I got to put all my stuff in here because on the surface, this doesn't entertain me. That's basically what I'm hearing from this. You know, that Jane Foster Thor storyline on the surface, that was entertaining to Taika Waititi. Probably because he doesn't care about this character at all. You know? Uh, yeah, so he just wants to poke fun. Oh, we got to start poking fun at this stuff. Poke fun at the Space Vikings. Poke fun at humans. Instead of just saying, hey, what's the story? Adapt that story as authentically and faithfully as you can. The comic run is very serious, and Jane's story is especially tense, he continued, and so to try to find humor around that stuff, as well as making it an emotional story, was always going to be difficult. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're trying to throw humor into a story that probably needs as little humor as you could possibly get in there, and yet, that's what he did. He tried to throw all kinds of corny jokes. Just, it was just, it was just terrible. It was a terrible time at the movies that night, and we struggled with that. You're damn right you struggled with that. And we wrestled with it through the edit right up until we finished the film. And it still came out like trash. You know, here's the thing. Like, what is the point of adapting Thor if you're just going to change all of this stuff around? Why not just write your own stuff? And honestly, this, this is really the problem. They cannot create. They cannot create the kind of characters that Disney and Warner Brothers and all of these big studios, Universal, you name it. These guys can't create those big, larger-than-life characters that all of the mainstream audiences are looking for that become franchises. They can't do that, okay? It's like if you go back to the 80s, you had filmmakers, right, creating larger-than-life characters. They all became franchises. You had guys like George Lucas. You had guys like James Cameron creating, actually being creative individuals, you know? Not to say that there wasn't some sort of adaptations going on, not to say that there weren't sequels, but it wasn't like it is now where all of that stuff just dominates the, you know, the, the movie going experience. You actually had original characters out there that actually became legendary film icons and blockbuster movies. And honestly, they were created like every year on a yearly basis. There was a new, oh, okay, what's this guy all about? You would get excited about new characters in films. Oh, I wonder who this guy is. We've never seen him before. We don't know anything about this story. Brand new stuff constantly. And you would just wonder, hey, man, what's this going to be about? We don't get that anymore. All we get is, you know, tired rehashes of the same characters over and over. Or, or they bastardize the existing characters that we all love, you know. They'll take Luke and they'll destroy him. You know, oh, well, I got to do it. I got my own take on Luke Skywalker. Let's destroy this character, you know? And the same thing goes with Thor. YTD explained, we did funny scenes about cancer. We did way more tragic scenes about having cancer. Some audiences really love the humor part of it. Some audiences really wanted it to be just like the comics. Uh, to this end, the upcoming Star Wars director, God, I hope not, uh, 
concluded. But you know, I always say if you want it to be exactly like the comics, read the comics. You've got to change some things here and there to make it a film. Yeah, we understand that. Again, see, I see this kind of stuff as just a big red flag, okay? A giant red flag when it comes to Star Wars, you know, being an upcoming Star Wars director. This is why he should not be an upcoming Star Wars director. Because you can almost hear him saying, well, if you want it to be exactly like Star Wars, you know, go watch the original trilogy, like or something to that effect. You can almost hear him saying that. I'm here to do me, my take, you know, and that's the problem with this. Listen, we understand that this is not the comic, but we got to make some adaptation. We got to make some changes when we're bringing something over, just like One Piece. One Piece changed all kinds of stuff. Right for the live action, they changed all kinds of stuff. From the I didn't watch, I didn't read the uh, manga. I did watch the anime. They changed all kinds of stuff. You know, there are certain slight little even character changes. You know, for some of the characters, they made some slight changes. I mentioned that on my review. I'll link that above if you didn't see that. But it still captured the essence. All right. They didn't deviate so far away from it that you didn't even recognize it anymore. And that's what this cat is going to do to Star Wars because he did it with Thor. It's like, this is this ain't Thor. I don't know who this is. This isn't Thor. This is your version of Thor. You're the little weird kid running around where everybody else is on one page and you on a completely different page, you know, and you want to make uh, Luke Skywalker a Wookiee or some shit like that. Like, we had friends that did that type of stuff. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, somebody on a completely different plane of existence. Like, nah, you don't need to be here. You've got to change things here and there to make it a film. Yeah, you have to change some things here and there, but you don't have to do these wholesale changes. You just want to be another Ryan Johnson. That's what you want to be. You want to be able to just do whatever it is you want to do in your sandbox, in your imagination, and just create and then throw all kind of goofball comedy in there. That's what Taika Waititi is about. You know what I'm saying? Instead of giving his audience like the storytelling that they want from a Star Wars or from Marvel, he wants to tell Taika Waititi stories. And that's fine. Actually, like I said, he's not bad in his, you know, wheelhouse. Go back to your wheelhouse. Stay over there. Everything ain't for everybody. Some things, you know, hey, man, it's just not for me. You know, go and make your types of films. I have no problems with it. But the problem here is, again, you got DC, you got Marvel, you got Disney, you got Star Wars. You got these big franchises and they're all cash cows for these studios. And all of these studios, they, they just want to do one thing. Hey, we just need to make content, okay? We need to make content. Taika Waititi is a popular filmmaker. People know his name, all right? He made some money for us. All right, give him a, give him a Star Wars movie, too. No, no, don't do that, all right? These cats, again, they don't have a love for the original material. Like I said, you got to be faithful. And if you don't love the originals, you shouldn't be a part of it, in my opinion. And don't be trying to fake the funk walking in with like, oh, look at all the stacks of comic books that I've read on this. Nah, 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 nah. You got to absolutely love the material that you are adapting, in my opinion. I don't want to see any more adaptations from people that don't love the original source material because they're just going to screw it up. If you love it, fine. If you don't love it, if they're just hijacked you and, oh, yeah, you're a big name director. Or you just did some crazy, you know, independent film that got a lot of awards. Why don't you come on over here? No, leave that dude over there. Let him continue to do what it is he's doing. Stay in his wheelhouse. All right. And give Star Wars to somebody that will be faithful. Give Marvel, give DC to these guys that are going to be faithful. OK, stick to the script or, you know, if in the case of One Piece, you bring along an Oda and Oda can just look over everybody's shoulder. OK, I wish George would just come back and just say, hey, man, I'm just going to look over everybody's shoulder and tell them where they're going wrong. You know, that would actually fix a lot of the problems in Star Wars. Anyway, I didn't mean for this to turn into a Star Wars. It seemed like everything turns into Star Wars for me. But you guys let me know what you think. Everything ain't for everybody, okay? That's how I look at it. And the Taika Waititi, although I do like his original stuff, like like I said, Thor Love and Thunder, whew, he was way off the reservation from that. Ragnarok, Ragnarok was already shaky, but it, again, it felt like a one-off. I was like, all right, whatever, it was all right, you know. But yeah, he went off the reservation with Thor Love and Thunder. That was absolutely garbage. But you guys let me know what you think. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.